What is thoracic scoliosis? When a patient is diagnosed with scoliosis, a lot of times they're diagnosed with something called thoracic scoliosis. So to understand what thoracic scoliosis is, you first of all have to understand what scoliosis is in general. Is scoliosis is an abnormal curvature of the spine um, of 10 degrees or greater. This is a Cobb angle measurement of 10 degrees or greater with an associated rotation of that area. Now, normally, um, these conditions would be classified by area of the scoliosis and what area is affecting. And this is normally done to help streamline treatment process, meaning if we know somebody has a thoracic scoliosis versus a lumbar scoliosis versus a thoracolumbar scoliosis, we can classify the patient, know that we what type of scoliosis they have, we can customize the treatment plan, and it can help us predict not only the outcome, but what things they could possibly have as a result of their scoliosis. The classification system, first of all, starts with age, whether the patient is is uh, infantile, meaning they're uh, somebody under two years of age, juvenile years of age, meaning somewhere between two and 10, um, between 10 and like 16 is considered adolescent or 18, and then 18 or greater is considered adult. So a patient will be first classified by the age of which they were diagnosed. Condition, meaning whether it, what type of scoliosis is it? Is it a idiopathic scoliosis, whether it's a neuromuscular scoliosis, congenital scoliosis, or degenerative? Most cases are diagnosed as idiopathic. So meaning that means unknown cause. However, some cases are diagnosed as congenital, meaning where there is a patient uh, has a hemivertebra or a bone that didn't fully form properly, and that normally happens from birth. There's also a neuromuscular causation, meaning a patient has a neuromuscular syndrome or a neuromuscular problem that, that could be affecting the connective tissue or the nerve system of the body, which could lead to causation of that scoliosis. And the last is degenerative. This is the adult case only. Um, that's a normally happening because the spine has shifted. It's going through a rapid phase of degeneration, which leads to a, the actual scoliosis from occurring, occurring. So first thing is you have the age of the patient, so like something like adolescent, condition type, idiopathic. Last, uh, thirdly, will be severity of the curve, whether it's mild, moderate, or severe. Mild curves are curves less than 25 degrees, but greater than 10. There'll be a mild uh, con severity between 25 and 40 to 45 degrees is considered a moderate scoliosis. And then lastly is anything over 45 is considered severe. So we know now this patient, let's say, has an adolescent idiopathic, say, severe what area, and that's the last uh, classification that's noted. Area means there is in the cervical spine, whether it's in the thoracic spine, whether it's in the thoracolumbar spine or lumbar spine. Um, so therefore, the, the, the last category in this scenario would be a, you know, adolescent, idiopathic, severe thoracic scoliosis. And thoracic means that the that the apex of the curvature is in the thoracic spine or mid back. There are very there are three sections of the spine: cervical, thoracic, and lumbar. But in scoliosis, there's four classifications. There is cervical, thoracic thoracolumbar lumbar and lumbar. So a patient could have uh, one of those four categories associated with their scoliosis. And the way they reference the exact area is where they find the most horizontal bone within the curve itself. So if you have a curve like this, there'll be one bone that's most, most horizontal. If that bone is within the thoracic spine from thoracic T1 down to T10, T11 at lowest, they call that a thoracic scoliosis. If it drops below T11 at T12, now they call that a thoracolumbar scoliosis. So the thoracic spine, most commonly the apex is around T7, uh, T6, um, typically T7, T8, T9, typically the middle of the thoracic spine. And this is the most common area where diagnosis tends to occur. And the reason why this is the most common area where diagnosis tends to occur because it's the easiest to spot when you look at the symptoms of scoliosis. So it's the most common area that we tend to find scoliosis or diagnose it, and it's the most common location, and it's the most easiest It's because it's the easiest to spot. The most common symptom associated with thoracic scoliosis is rib changes. We see the rib changes, and typically we can see these rib changes when a patient bends forward, which is the most common way they test for scoliosis. So most times they're having to do something called Adams forward bending test, They'll bend forward, they'll see a thoracic scoliosis create rib unleveling, that one side of the rib goes up, one side of the ribs goes down. Very easy to notice in this forward bending test. They say you have scoliosis, so send them off to um, an orthopedist. They can go have an x-ray performed and they'll find a thoracic scoliosis. Lumbar curves don't produce this rib deformity. 
So therefore, they bend forward, the ribs look fine, and if the doctor isn't specifically looking at the lumbar spine or looking at the waist size or whether the waist is symmetrical, they'll very often get missed and not get noticed. That's why rib uh, trithoracic scoliosis is the most common diagnosed scoliosis because it's the easiest to find. However, I honestly believe there's many lumbar cases that go undiagnosed because they don't produce as obvious as symptoms as a thoracic scoliosis would do. In adults, the most common ten thing that tends to bring out the diagnosis is pain. And the reason why they're experiencing pain as an adult and we don't experience pain as a child is because what's causing the progression. What's causing the progression in the adult stage is compression over time, meaning the body is compressing because of gravity. It causes those compression to actually press on nerves, tissues, and, and systems around the spine, which can actually lead to pain. Where in the adolescent, they're progressing because of growth or elongation, which does not hurt. So therefore, most kids have no pain. The number one finding is postural, where in adults, number one finding tends to be pain, which leads to the diagnosis of thoracic scoliosis. In every case of thoracic scoliosis, we know that acting proactively will, will likely lessen the risk of developing a severe thoracic scoliosis. Most thoracic scoliosis curves will almost always go to the right. Very rarely you see thoracic curves go to the left. Most common, they go to the right. And the reason why they go to the right because they move away from the heart. The heart's on the left side. Not saying that if there is one going to the left that it's actually pressing or pushing on the heart. The spine is rotating around just like the body is rotating around and everything's moving with it. So the body's growing and developing with this scoliosis. But if we ever see a left thoracic scoliosis, in those cases, we're normally thinking we should test to see if there's anything else that possibly could be what's pushing the curve to the right, to the left as opposed to the right. So the most common is a right thoracic scoliosis, most commonly diagnosed in adolescence, and no most commonly diagnosed as idiopathic, meaning unknown cause. At Scoliosis Reduction Center, we're always working at not only trying to hold the curve from progressing, whether you're adolescent or adult stage, but most importantly, we're looking to reduce the curve. And the reason why we want to reduce the curve, because all cases of scoliosis, whether it be thoracic or lumbar, the bigger the curve becomes, the more likely it is to worsen. So the smaller curve always means better. So the best way to impact the, the future progression of your scoliosis and what's it going to cause and what's it going to lead to is not to just try to slow it down, but to actually reduce the size. If you reduce the size, you reduce the impact it has on your life and you reduce what it's actually doing. And you're actually not only reducing, but you're actually gaining um, more quality of life as the spine tends to improve as opposed to just slowing it down and, and trying to slow down progression, hopefully with it not worsening, where corrective measures are actually providing us more improvement for the spine to produce a better outcome. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this information helpful. If you'd like to hear about other topics and information on scoliosis, type in the comments below and let us know. And finally, subscribe and hit the bell icon to be notified of when we publish content. Thanks.